This is John Paul Rye. I'm coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. Want to go over this tweet here by Frank Driven, and he's following Death vs. Herd and putting out things all the time. And this is about the new claim Amber made that she was, well, let's just say the R worded while a partner with Johnny Depp. Now, here's the thing some people. I know, not going to mention names, not going to start it up, so let's keep people anonymous, said that they thought it was a certain person that actually did it. But if you think that it was a certain person, you want to speculate that it was a certain person that did this to Amber, well, you're saying it's true. You're saying she's telling the truth, now let's find out who it is. So I'm saying, before we even think about who did this, allegedly, let's think about if it's true, let's think about some probability. So we've got Amber Heard. She is a factual liar. She is a factual abuser from 2009. She's got a DWI. She committed perjury. She's not a trustable person. So I'm to believe around the same time she was going through this alleged abuse with Johnny Depp, she also had the all word done to her. Now, it's not impossible. And most women let's just say probably 95%, I'd probably believe and I'd say, yeah, that's, that's, you know, terrible. What happened? I'd get the facts. I'd, of course, think about it critically, but Amber Heard is not most women. So I've got to kind of think about it a little bit harder because of the situation she's in where she's been caught in so many lies. So what I quote tweeted was, yeah, to say it's anyone at all is saying, first of all, you believe it happened. I tried to explain this yesterday with not everyone getting it. Let's see his original tweet. He says, so it could have been Musk, Franco, Delavinge, Io, that entire sports team, that tree over there, and a gear shift. Because she was with all of them while the partner of Johnny Depp, but who said it had to be somebody she was with romantically? If the attorney claimed that she was all worded by somebody else she was dating, aside from Johnny Depp, there you go. Now we could speculate. Was it Musk? Was it Franco? Was it whoever else she might have dated in that time period? But we can't do that yet, because to do that, we've got to assume that what her lawyer's saying is true, which is not what I'm in the business of doing. And then he goes on to say, or, or, could be she's just a dog smuggling, spouse abusing, non-donating, turding, compulsive liar. Which I think is kind of what I'm saying, that it's just this story as of now, with again, zero evidence. And Deb said, if it wasn't Johnny, then why bring it up? What's the point? The point is, her lawyer thought there was a law that if that happened to somebody, that... You couldn't have a camera in the courtroom, which is going to happen, but it turns out that's only for criminal cases, not civil cases. I guess Amber's lawyer's not good enough to know that. Which seems like a pretty basic thing, getting a camera in a courtroom or not, and what court cases can allow that. That's not like some really minute detail that only the best of the best lawyers should know. I don't know, that sounds pretty basic to me. But what do I know? I'm no lawyer. Maybe it's a really difficult thing that they skip out on in law school these days. And this person says, nailed it. And I agree. And this person says, I totally agree. And I totally agree. So yeah, that's basically it. Shout out to Frank Drebin. He's doing a great job. I'm not exactly sure if it's a he, but I'm going to assume because I see Frank Drebin up there. So, okay. Frank Drebin's the cop from Naked Gun. I kind of liked it back in the day. Also, on a side note about Twitter, I think I kind of get involved too much with conversations with people without platforms who are just kind of maybe trolling, maybe not trolling, and then I kind of get frustrated and I think to myself, oh, Twitter's toxic. But it's really not, because what happens is you get into these conversations and no one's reading it anymore, because even if you have followers, your followers aren't reading down the line that long if it's been going on for a while and they don't really have followers in most cases so kind of nobody's reading it and you're having like this private conversation and getting frustrated with each other but no one's watching 
So the point is, Twitter is really only as toxic as you make it. If you go looking for a toxic argument, you'll find it. But it's not that often where it really comes to you. Or you could just reply, you know, in some kind of general way. Well, I respectfully disagree. You know, that's your opinion. This is mine. And be done with it. But people kind of keep going on impulse. And that's what kind of makes it toxic. If you let yourself get into those conversations, it can feel toxic, is what I'm trying to say. But anyway, enough about that. You guys let me know what you think down below about this tweet, this situation. Do you think this actually happened to Amber? Hey, I can't rule it out. She's saying it wasn't Depp, and I'm really here mostly defending Depp with this case. So, all right. But I tend to think, based on her track record of telling the truth, that, well, you know, we need more evidence and info. If you're not subscribed here and you don't, I'll be pretty sad about it. But I'll make a new video, something like that. We're done here for now. See you next time.